Notre Dame in the clubhouse. Three more tickets to be punched for the college football playoff. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, running down Notre Dame's effort at the L.A. Coliseum as the Irish go perfect in 2018, disposing of USC their final hurdle 24 to 17 after going down 10 to nothing in the first half. All right, USC had a myriad of injuries. They haven't been playing well. They lost to a two-win UCLA team last week, 34-27. So it's been a dismal season for USC, and we'll see what fate beholds uh, Clay Helton uh, a little bit later. But focusing on this game and the Notre Dame story, USC came in with a number of injuries, especially on defense. They lost their best player, Porter Gustin, a number of weeks ago, and the injuries have been mounting and came to a head in this game. A number of true freshmen on the field with little experience played very well for USC. We will highlight that in just a second. Clay Helton took over the play calling for USC a few weeks ago with little impact or little success. It looked really good early on. Uh, Obviously, the game plan was to get the ball to the playmakers in space. That's where we thought, uh, based on my preview and prediction, where USC had the one advantage, despite Notre Dame having a strong secondary, the likes of St. Brown, Pittman, Vaughns is where USC really excels, the strongest unit on the team. And they needed to get the ball out of JT Daniels' hands because of the offensive line issues and because of the front four and the pass rush of Notre Dame. And that's what they did on the first drive. Eight plays, 78 yards. JT Daniels hitting on six of seven passes. Uh, Maive Malapiai scored the touchdown from 14 yards out. And USC looked really sharp in drive number one. Seven to nothing right there. All right, uh, much was made and has been made, and we've talked about it on here. Uh, JT Daniels and uh, Amon Ross St. Brown both come from uh, Modern Day High School, and so they've worked together over and over and over. And uh, this is the first time I had heard this guesstimation from the two of them, that they have thrown the football back and forth 100,000 times plus. That many reps between the two. And JT Daniels, you can see from the box scores, uh, targeted Uh, St. Brown exclusively early, uh, especially that uh, game opener against UNLV, uh, which the USC Trojans won 43 to 21. And now that he's found more targets and become comfortable with the other players, and that's only natural since he had that many reps with St. Brown, I'm guessing it was slightly less than 100,000. But uh, this was not a quarterback who was able to go through spring reps. Uh, He didn't hit the practice field with USC until August He's a young player. He's a freshman. He's first on campus. He did everything that he could to prepare for the season mentally, get with the coaches in meetings, watch game film, and uh, run through the uh, individual drills during the summer. And he's an improved player and looks to have a great career at USC, but a rough ride here in 2018 for the most part. But he has definitely developed. Okay, Ross A. Brown had 10 catches for 94 yards in this game. So he's still uh, one of the favorite targets, obviously, of JT Daniels. All right, USC was moving again, unfortunately, after a pass reception to Michael Pittman. Troy Pride pried it away from Mr. Pittman at the Notre Dame 39-yard line, and USC had another scoring threat, but that was denied on the fumble, and that would be a storyline in this game as uh, Notre Dame denied USC on that one. SC at that point... Minus 10 turnover ratio, that's not good. That's not going to get it done. And that has largely contributed to the 5-7 and seven season. Notre Dame got on the board with a touchdown to make it 10-7 to seven after falling behind. Uh, one of my favorite players, Chris Fink, inside joke. Three receptions on the drive and a 24-yard touchdown catch. He caught seven on the day for 86 yards. The aforementioned Michael Pittman, one of the more exciting players to watch in college football with a jump ball that was tremendous with a minute left in the first half. Uh, to get USC in position again, but they could not finish off the drive. Pittman caught seven passes for 91 yards. Tyler Vaughns had a ton of targets as well. His first 10 targets were all receptions. 10 for 10. Vaughns caught 12 for a buck 20. Start adding up the numbers just in your head, and you're going to come out with uh, big numbers for JT Daniels, and we'll get to his record-setting night in just a second. 
I'm on St. Brown. Ross St. Brown again with another fumble from a USC wide receiver. So Vaughn's St. Brown and Pittman all had big nights statistically, but they had key fumbles in this game. We talked about the Pittman fumble this time. Ross St. Brown with a big fumble that was caused by a low high Gilman as the forced fumble and Dante Vaughn's for the Fighting Irish with the fumble recovery that thwarted a USC drive at the Notre Dame. 29-yard line after a 70-yard drive on six plays. Miles Boykin caught a Hail Mary at the end of the half, but it was at the three-yard line, and USC wrapped him up with a tackle, and time ran out. Otherwise, USC would have been in trouble right there, but they stopped the play. They led 10-7 to at halftime. That was an 83-yard drive for naught for Notre Dame. On to the second half and the explosion from Dexter Williams. USC held him in check for the most part all night. If you do the math here, 97 yards on 16 carries, but the explosion for a 52-yard touchdown that put Notre Dame in front for the first time and for the last time at 14-10. to And the Notre Dame defense basically after getting shredded, not for big plays in the first half, but kind of eaten alive, picked apart by J.D. Daniels with short passes, discovered, hey, We need to start playing more physical, more press coverage, not allow these guys just to catch these five and six yard passes, make a move on us and uh, drag us for a few yards and get first downs. Uh, They're they're killing us to death with the first and 10 throws out in the flat where they get six and seven yards and set up the second and short. That's what happened in the first half. In the second half, Notre Dame left it to their secondary led by Julian Love in covering these uh, USC wide receivers. They were tackling. They were more ferocious, tenacious. The Notre Dame team came out a bit flat. They didn't play awful. They didn't make a ton of mistakes, but they they were flat. And because USC was not able to take advantage and build a big lead, of course, it was only 10 to nothing, then 10 to seven. And then with a Williams 52 yard explosion, 14 to 10. Tyler Vaughn's, this led to nothing, but I had to make note of it. Made a ridiculous catch again along the sideline. Julian Love had him trapped again the the sideline. He still leaped up, made the catch, and got the foot down for a 28-yard completion. Uh, But uh, Notre Dame forced USC to punt, even though the Trojans made it to the Notre Dame 29. another, Another failed possession in which USC was able to move the football but couldn't move it close enough. They had to punt after getting thrown back. Bad pass interference call on Iman uh, Marshall. Three minutes left in the third quarter, only down 14 to 10. And this led to a field goal. So this was key in the game. I don't know what the officials were looking at. Marshall was uh, pressing him slightly, but uh, didn't grab him, didn't hold him, didn't do anything overtly physical. I thought it was a bad pass interference call. Uh, Fourth and two conversion to... uh, Dexter Williams took it down to the USC 25, so that was a beautiful play in which uh, Notre Dame invited the pass rush and threw it from where the blitzing linebacker was coming right to Dexter Williams for the big gainer on fourth and two down to the USC 25. That was after the pass interference against Biggie Marshall, and Notre Dame was up 17-10. to Chase Williams, it was discussed during the game. He's had knee problems. He's just a true freshman. He was forced into action and he played outstanding football, and despite his slight build, laid the lumber a number of times as well. So USC's loaded across the board, and if they get some better direction in coaching and develop some of these players, they'll be in good shape. Justin Yoon set the Notre Dame all-time field goal career record. Just about a month ago, he set the all-time scoring record. Now he's got the record for field goals. Uh, USC, again, outstanding players across the board. Uh, They were uh, highlighted all night on defense, some of the young talent there. Uh, Ian Book did make a bad decision trying to make it a two-score game. He threw into traffic in the end zone. That was picked off by Jordan McMillan, true freshman walk-on, who was pressed into action as well and played well tonight and made that key interception to keep USC in the game. But with about four and a half minutes left to play in this game at uh, 24-10, or actually 17-10, USC still within a touchdown on a key third and 12. Ian Book broke contain and picked up the first down. That was huge and pretty much a back breaker uh, because uh, just a couple plays later, Tony Jones ran at 51 yards with a pass out in the flat. USC brought the blitz, 
brought the blitz on a third and six, and uh, Notre Dame went on to the 24 to 10 lead on the 51 yard catch and run from Tony Jones. For those of you that like to put a buck or two on a game, the USC drive late in the game was key, down 24 to 10. They converted with about 30 seconds left to pet play. JT Daniels with the touchdown pass to make it 24 17 as USC was an 11 point underdog. JT Daniels, 37 of 51 on the night. That is only important because he puts himself down in the USC record book for a number of single game pass completions with those 37. Think about the quarterbacks that have gone through USC, arguably the best in college football all time. That's definitely an argument, but I would consider USC to have produced quarterbacks in the top five of all of college football. Miami would be there. Washington State's produced great quarterbacks and some other schools, Alabama, uh, going way back to Namath, Starr, and Stabler. But think about Darnold, Sanchez, Hayden, Palmer, Uh, Who else did I think of? Paul McDonald, uh, uh, Vince Evans, Todd Marinovich, a number of great players for USC, and uh, the record now in JT Daniels' hands. He hopes that he is able to contribute to more meaningful records in victories for USC, but on this night they played well but made a few key mistakes, and they fall to Notre Dame 7 uh, 24 to 17. So Notre Dame, yes, there is going to be criticism for them not playing in a conference or a conference championship game and a 13th game data point, but perfect record gets them into the playoff. No question about it. And uh, we'll see what Notre Dame has for the likes of a Clemson, possibly in the first round. If the Tigers hang on, beat Pitt and go into the playoff perfect and Alabama does the same and keeps Clemson in the number two spot, you would think Notre Dame would be at number three or maybe they get trumped by a one-loss conference champion and move back to four and have to face Alabama in the first round. Regardless, you got to face the big boys once you get to the playoff and Notre Dame will be making that appearance for the first time in the brief history, fifth year of the college football playoff. Want to hear what you have to say about Notre Dame football? Maybe USC and Clay Helton's situation coming off this 5-7 and seven campaign right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football.